Hey everyone, Fusemark coming at ya. If you haven't watched our previous video, which is going to be an Ethereum overview, I definitely encourage you to check that out, especially if you have no background on Ethereum. It'll give you that high level overview from a developer perspective of kind of the tools and things that you'll need to actually get started understanding a little bit what we do in this video. And another thing I'd love to know down in the comments below is, is there any specific type of content you'd like to see, especially around Ethereum and Unity, because I know that it's kind of sparse. In this video, we'll just be primarily going over how you can get something up and running within Unity. But then in future videos, one thing I'd like to do is just kind of set up a web VR, very simple application that hooks into say something like MetaMask using Unity and WebGL and have a very nice connection between the blockchain and VR, which I think would be really, really cool to see. But I'd be curious also to know in the comments if there's other types of applications that you'd be curious to learn more about. But with that said, why don't I go ahead and switch over to desktop mode here and let's take a look at N Ethereum. So N Ethereum is this open source project that's built out by Juan Blanco and they've been doing such an awesome job maintaining this and their community is pretty active. This is built primarily for C Sharp and for desktop based applications, but they do have support for Unity, which I think is kind of the crucial thing. I'd encourage you to take a look over this readme here just to kind of get a sense of the project in general. One of the things I think is really interesting is they've kind of built this web interface for and Ethereum specifically that allows you to run this C sharp code within the browser, which is honestly pretty rare to, to see in the first place. So I think this is pretty cool. It at the time of recording just went through an update and apparently there's some hiccups that, that are going on right now. So we won't be able to play around with this, but I definitely encourage you, it, it should stabilize sometime soon to, to take a look at this. And I think this is just a really good tool to better understand how Ethereum works and play around with it in kind of a web-like interface. The main project we're gonna be taking a look at is this sample project built by an Ethereum called Unity 3D Simple Sample Net 461. That Net 461 is important because if you actually go take a look at their repository here, You'll see there's the simple sample. I wasn't able to get this one specifically to work, but this one worked right out of the box. So definitely take a look at the Net 461 version. Uh, I know that's a little confusing, but uh, the, the Net 461 is the one that I was able to get working. We'll take a look at these later, but then I've also gone ahead and set up my Infer account, which will be needing to integrate with an Ethereum. And then I also have Ropsten set up with a couple accounts just to test sending Ethereum across the network, as well as uh, having some Ethereum that was generated by the faucet. So that's basically everything we'll need. And the first thing you'll need to do is go ahead and clone this, which I have already done. All right, once you've gone ahead and opened that up within Unity, this is the first thing you'll see here. Bunch of different scripts here down at the bottom. There's a link file, which is very important to make sure all the libraries are linked together. And then you'll have this sample scene here, which is basically a canvas that allows you to interact with the Ethereum network. And so you can see here you have your URL. They will ask for a private key because this was how we will be signing messages if you don't have a wallet, right? or have an interface into a wallet that is capable of signing messages. And Ethereum does support this, and we'll likely take a look at this in separate videos, uh, especially around, let's say you are building a WebGL application and you want MetaMask to, to do the signature and the wallet authentication, et cetera, et cetera. You would send the transaction to MetaMask with a Web3 call, which is actually what we saw here within uh, Playground. You can do that uh, and Ethereum supports that fully and that that'll work. So, but if you, if you're not planning to do that and you just want to do some temple testing, which is what we're planning to do in this video, you'll want to provide your private key uh, and make sure to keep that local or even better set up test accounts and just use those private keys as dummy accounts. Like that's the ideal thing. And, um, 
then you would just put the address in, the amount, and you can click transfer. So that's this done with coroutines. Uh, after that, you'll see a transaction hash and the balance that has been sent. And that is this flow that's happening exactly here on the left. You also have a couple async functions that are available to get, say, the block number. And you also gonna need to pass the URL in. They have the same thing as a coroutine. And the reason for that is because asyncs do not work within WebGL. So you will have to rely on the coroutine route as a means to build out any WebGL web VR applications. So with that said, I mean, the easiest thing to do is just to test this, right? So let's first go and most of the logic happens here within this Ethereum coroutine. And you can see here just some dummy stuff that they've put in, testing on local host. What we'll be doing is testing on Robston just because I don't wanna deal with the setup of setting up a local Ethereum node. If you want, you can of course use local host, which is what this is designed to do. To, to test this, what we'll, we'll first wanna do is head over to Infura, uh, if you haven't created an account, make sure to do so. I've already done that. You'll have your dashboard and then you'll go to Ethereum. I've created a project here already, but if you want, you can just really quickly create a new project. It just, you just type a name in and that's it. Then once you are in that project, you can simply go to your settings. You'll have a project ID, project secret, these will likely be blurred just to, to save myself some sanity. And but you'll also be able to choose an endpoint. And that endpoint is exactly the URL that you will need to plug into an Ethereum. So I have, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Robston network and I have my dummy account set up. So I have my MetaMask dummy and a Unity test dummy will be sending um, messages back and forth between the two. And so first thing we'll need to do is just copy the endpoint for Robston. We are using, I believe in this case, HTTP or HTTPS in this case. So copy the HTTPS link. Go ahead and paste that in to the field on, on the script here. You'll alternatively be able to do this in the console, but I kind of just to, to save yourself some time, you'll want to go ahead and do that on the C-sharp script. Second thing you'll want to do is you will need to get the private key out of MetaMask. And you'll see here I have a hardware wallet. Never give out the private key to a hardware wallet, regardless of whether you're on the test network or not. I'm going to be doing it here. I will likely also blur out the, um, <laughs> the, the private key here as well, even though it's a test account that I'm going to be deleting afterwards. You'll want to go to your account details in MetaMask and then click export private key. So let me go ahead and do that here as well. And then we have to pa paste in the address that we want to send to. So in this case, I'm gonna be sending to this MetaMask dummy account. And for that, I just need to replace the address to field. Go ahead and click save. And then we can try running this and see if we are capable of sending. You'll see the URL has been added, the field for private key is added, the address too is added. We'll set the amount, yeah, I have, if I remember correctly, I have 1.2 ETH. So let's set this to like 0.1 ETH and click transfer. You take a look at the logs here, then we have the transaction hash that was generated for this. And if we then go and copy this into say Etherscan, there we go. Right, so if we go to our MetaMask, we go onto our account, you'll see that this is the same transaction that we saw within Unity, and it just went through just four blocks ago. And so that was a subtraction from Unity test into MetaMask, and you'll see I had 0.6 before, I now have 0.7. If I go again and view this account on Etherscan, you'll see that point 0.1 has been sent. Here's the small transaction fee for that, and it was done about a minute ago. So that's basically it. So let's quickly, that I mean, that's just your first transaction done within Ethereum 
in kind of this very simple, easy to do manner. If you want, you can then of course take this and build this out into a WebGL application, which is the goal. Let's quickly take a look at what's happening behind the hood to make that happen. We, since we gave the private key, we have a message that we want to say, say that sends Ethereum from my address to someone else's address. We sign that message with the private key. We send that to the Robson URL via a JSON um, function, a API call. Robston then handles sending that out to the rest of the blockchain for validation that gets stored on the blockchain. We get the transaction hash and then we can verify whenever that actually goes through. In terms of flow, you'll see here. So we called this transfer ether function. They took the URL, the private key and the address, parsing that out. And then they create this ETH transfer unity request by passing in the URL and private key here. So that is what is responsible for wrapping the request. You'll then uh, call the coroutine transfer ether, which will be pass the receiving address, the amount and how much you want to pay in gas fees. Actually curious what they've passed in here. Uh, you'll see here the gas price is two. If you actually look at gas, gas fees, that's really small, but since we're on the test network, it's totally fine. And then we just wait, wait for that transaction to go through. Once it does, we'll get the transfer hash. You'll then have to poll constantly because again, updating on the blockchain isn't something like you ping a server, it does the processing and sends back the result. It takes time. So here, what they do is they check every two seconds or so to see, has my transaction been processed? And once we do, we print out that transaction mined and we can check the balances. So you can see here, that's exactly what happened. Once that transaction went through, we, we say it was successful, mined, then the balance gets adjusted accordingly. And uh, that's it. That's really all there is to this very simple function that we see here. And all of this is again, built off of an Ethereum and they have a bunch of different documentation on how you could do this with say smart contracts or integrating with MetaMask. But yeah, I just wanted to keep things very short in this video because just even getting to the point where you have this project working takes a little bit of understanding around setting up your accounts and making sure you get the URLs correct, making sure you use Robston, for example, to get some Ethereum in and just getting those flow set up can take some time. My goal is with some of these future videos to dive a little bit more in depth into this SDK and kind of build this out into say some sort of web VR application. But I'd also love to know down in the comments below, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, what other types of applications you would be interested in seeing built with Ethereum and Unity? Because I think there's a whole slew of things that this opens the doors to. But I think that'll do that for now. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.